This is Mark Crescenzi's Poly 150H lesson accompanying Chapter 13 of Bruce Bueno de Mesquita's Principles of International Politics, 5th edition. How can terrorism be rational? When we see images of suicide bombings and attacks on civilians, it is difficult to understand why and how these attacks occur. Can terrorism be a rational tool? Terrorism is any act of violence undertaken for the purpose of altering a government's political policies that target those who don't have personal authority to change government policy. This is why, for example, a suicide bomber in a marketplace is considered an act of terrorism, while a military operation to fight another country's military is not. The next important term to discuss is what it means to be rational. To be a rational actor, one's preferences must be complete and transitive. This just means you have to have preferences, you can order them, and the order makes sense according to those preferences. According to BDM, the reason why governments and their adversaries struggle to reach compromises is because an information problem exists. The government doesn't know what type of adversary it's facing, and the adversary doesn't know what type of government it's engaging with. Much foreign policy, therefore, is built around gauging whether a terrorist organization is making credible threats. Likewise, a terrorist organization's strategy is shaped by how it perceives the government it's dealing with. BDM outlines three types of adversaries and two types of governments for his models. Government adversaries can fall into one of three groups. True believers are stereotypical terrorist groups that are unbending and fanatical. Al-Qaeda is often cited as an example of this type. For true believers, perceptions about government type are largely irrelevant. They always prefer violence to negotiation. Reluctant terrorists are people who will prefer to employ traditional means of advancing their goals, but will revert to terrorism in dire situations. BDM uses the example of some members of the Palestine Liberation Organization. A complacent opponent is best described as a disgruntled opponent that prefers negotiation to any kind of terrorist activity. This category fits the majority of adversaries because terrorism is still a very rare strategy. Before moving on, Consider how governments categorize their adversaries into these types. Using an example we're probably all familiar with, Al-Qaeda, discuss why BDM labels them true believers. What do you think this is based on? In your opinion, is it true? Why? Pause this video for a minute to discuss your thoughts with your small group. According to BDM, there are also two types of governments, responsive and repressive. Responsive governments prefer good faith negotiation to the repression of their adversaries. Repressive governments prefer the opposite. We assume that both of these government types prefer negotiating or repressing their adversaries over being a terrorist target. Table 13.1 on page 421 summarizes the preference orderings we'll use for modeling in the rest of this video. Now we're going to walk through how BDM uses Bayes' rule to assign expected utilities to different government responses to adversaries. We'll assume that we're dealing with the types of actors that BDM has set up who are also rational actors that want to act in their own best interests. Before beginning, pause this video and look at the table. Discuss with your small group why there are information problems in this scenario. Why, for example, might a government not know what type of adversary it's facing? Now we'll walk through the examples. First, we'll talk about calculating expected utilities. Then we'll talk about obtaining conditional probabilities using Bayes' rule. As you may recall, expected utilities are calculated by multiplying the probability that an event will occur times the utility associated with its occurrence and then summing these products across all possible outcomes. The assumption that we make is that different types of actors assign different utilities to outcomes. For example, let's consider the reluctant terrorist. We know that a reluctant terrorist prefers negotiation to terrorist attacks but prefers a terrorist attack to repression. All that matters, therefore, is that when assigning the utility the order of the utilities aligns with the preference of the actors. We'll therefore attach a utility of 1 to negotiations, a utility of 0.4 to engaging in terrorism, and a utility of 0 to submitting to government repression. What strategy the reluctant terrorist group chooses to pursue depends on whether the government is responsive or repressive. However, the group doesn't know what government type it's dealing with. All the group can do is look at past behavior of the government and use that to predict what government type they're dealing with. In this first example, let's assume that there's a 50-50 chance that the government is responsive. Given this information and the utilities of the reluctant terrorists assigned to each outcome, we can calculate the reluctant terrorists' expected utility for trying to negotiate. 
If the expected utility for negotiating is greater than the expected utility for terrorist activity, the terrorist group would prefer to negotiate. If it's less, they would prefer to engage in terrorist activity. The equation for the setup is listed below. Substituting in, we can see that the expected utility of negotiation is 0.5 times 1 plus 0.5 times 0, which is 0.5. Since the expected utility of negotiating, 0.5, is greater than the expected utility of terrorist activity, 0.4, the reluctant terrorist should you choose to negotiate. Feel free to pause this video to review this with your group. What if terrorists have seen more repressive than responsive behavior from the government in the past? They might choose to update their beliefs by estimating that the probability that the government is repressive is 0.65 and the probability that it is responsive is 0.35. So what would be the expected utility of negotiating now? If you feel comfortable and like to work this out in your small group, feel free to pause the video. Looking back at our original formulation, we see that the probability that the government is responsive is 0.35 times the utility of negotiating, which is 1. The probability that the government is repressive is now 0.65 times the utility of negotiating, which is 0. Now, the expected utility of negotiating, 0.35, is less than the expected utility of terrorist activity, 0.4, so reluctant terrorists have an incentive to engage in terrorism. If you need to review or discuss the calculation of these two expected utilities with your small group, pause the video before moving forward. We're going to end with a more complicated application using Bayes' rule. Bayes' rule is a very helpful statistical rule that allows us to calculate conditional probabilities. By conditional probability, I mean the probability that an event occurred given that another event already happened. If you've taken statistics classes before, you may have already worked with conditional probabilities or with Bayes' rule. If not, just follow along and feel free to review the example on page 425 after class or use some of the other instructional resources on Bayes' rule provided with this lesson. This is the formula for Bayes' rule. A quick review of probability notation. Probability of A is the probability that event A occurs. Probability A given B is a conditional probability. It means the probability that event A occurs given that B has already happened. Probability not A means the probability that event A did not occur. In this case, we're going to try and calculate the conditional probability that the government is repressive given that it made a statement saying it will not negotiate with terrorists. Instead of using A's and B's, we're going to use R's and S's. R stands for repressive so not R stands for not repressive or responsive, and S stands for statement that the government makes. We'll stick with the 50-50 assumption that we used in the very first example. This means that the probability that the government is repressive is 0.5 and the probability that it is responsive is also 0.5. Now we need the conditional probabilities. Probability of S given R and probability of S given not R. We'll use very basic ones to make this easier. BDM makes two assumptions in his example. First, that a repressive government always truthfully declares it will not negotiate with terrorists. This means the probability that S given R is 1. Second, there is a 50-50 chance that the government will make the statement even if it is not repressive in hopes of deterring terrorists. Therefore, probability of S given not R is 0.5. So using Bayes' rule, what is the probability of R given S. If you'd like to pause the video and do the math with your small group, feel free. The probability that R is repressive, given that it makes a statement, is 0.67. Feel free to pause and review this math. Let's wrap up by going back to our expected utility calculations again. Suppose we're working again with reluctant terrorists. Now the government has made a statement and the terrorist organization believes that the probability the government is repressive is 0.67, instead of 0.5. What now is the expected utility for the terrorists of negotiating with the government? Will they choose to negotiate or not? Pause the video and work this out with your small group. The expected utility of negotiation is 0.33 times 1 plus 0.67 times 0, which is 0.33. Since 0.33 is less than 0.4, we'll expect that in this circumstance, the reluctant terrorists will choose to engage in terrorist activity.